respected brothers in Islam, as you know that by nature, a human of thinking of an invisible power who is called God or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is also in human nature to get in touch with that power or with that entity. And for the said purpose, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent messengers and prophets. Because as you know, first of all, you have to know what the goal is. And number two, how to approach the goal. Sometimes you know the goal, but you don't know how to approach it. Everybody knows that billion dollars it means something. That's a goal. How you will get million dollars or billion dollars, you have to find out the way that like Bill Gates or people like him. Which the Sham is trying to. So my dear respected brothers, everybody is fine. Now the goal is how to get in touch with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the set purpose, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messengers and the prophet because if Allah is beyond the approach of your aql, your reason, and your intellect, because it doesn't matter how much intellectual you are, still you have the limits. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond those limits. So now you have to approach another source or another mean. And that source and mean is Allah himself. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not talking to everybody directly. Through his messengers and prophets, he spoke to them that this is the way which will take you towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's way and path is called the Sirat al-Mustaqim which we are making to our day and night in a sirat al-mustaqim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَإِنَّكَ لَتَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ سِرَاتِ mustaqim Your duty, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that you are calling them towards sirat al-mustaqim. That this is the road if somebody will ask you, how to approach a Sacramento or San Francisco. So the easy way is just go there, take an exit to five north, and then go thoroughly and truly. It will take you to Sacramento, or it will take you to San Francisco, that is Sarate Mustafim to Sacramento or to San Francisco. So now what is the Sarate Mustafim which will take us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Every prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the people towards their sirat. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّكَ لَتَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَىٰ سِرَاتِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ كَانَ أُمَّةً قَانِتًا لِلَّهِ إِجْتَبَاهُ وَحَدَاهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen Prophet Ibrahim and he had guided him towards Salat al-Mustaqim. 
and Allah says in Holy Quran, in the Rabbi ala Sirat al Mustafeen, where our Lord is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear. He is in the other end of this Sirat al Mustafeen or this freeway or this motorway. If you will go on the same freeway straight, so on the other end, what is the end? They end depend. For everybody, his death is the ultimate end. Before death, there is no end. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wahabud Rabbaka, Hatta Yati Yatal Yati, worship your Lord until your death. There is no up, there is no ta'udla, there is no vacation, nothing like this. Wahabud Rabbaka, Hatta Yati Yatal Yati, until your death, you have to follow Allah, to obey His commandments, and to abstain from violation of the rules of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ta'abir in Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many, many times in the ta'abir are explained with only two words. Al-Amru bin Maruf wa nahyu an al What is good, you have to do that. What is evil, you must abstain from. And therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hashr, Whatever the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you in word or in practice. Because as you know, that holy Quran, it has ambiguity, ambiguity in a sense that everybody does not know the proper interpretation and, 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 and uh, implementation of holy Quran. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did, he sent his messenger to show us through his practices that this is the application and this is the interpretation. And that's why when he was teaching his Sahaba, he used to tell them, Sallu kamara e tumuni usalli. Or he says, Uzu anni manasikakum la alli la alqaakum fi maqami hadha abadan. It was only regarding ibadah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he was praying and he told the Sahaba, they prayed the way you are looking at me, I am praying. Which of our prayer is accepted to Allah? The prayer which is much more closer to the prayer of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa As you know, Sayyidina Abu Huraira, what a great Sahabi he is. And as you know, that the dispute of the battle between Muawiyah and Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, that was based upon their ijtihad and deduction. Sayyidina Ali, he had his own deduction. Sayyidina Muawiyah, he had his own ijtihad. This is not a matter of Iman and Kufr. This is a matter of the dispute of two ulama. And as you know, that when a alim makes something clear through his analogy and analogical deduction, <coughs> then he is showing devotion to me that now I am totally only for this concept of deen, which I found out from Quran and Sunnah. If I am telling you that this is deen and this is deen and this is deen, and you see me, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect Allah for say, Ameen. I am too weak. You are saying that constantly I am violating that rule. So you will get confused that either this guy is cheating us, or he is cheating himself, or he is trying to cheat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though I am a student, I am not a alim, but only I am giving you an example. That a alim, he is not cheating Allah. He is not cheating himself, nor he is cheating his people. So that's why. What was the deduction of Sayyidina Ali? And they were neat and clean people. They were not flip now. They were not hiding things. Whatever was in their mind, they used to express it. Got it or not? Let me tell you one thing. That when Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Razi Allah ta'ala an, even he was in his last moments, he was on his deathbed, and he was thinking of the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that right after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was a dispute between Muhajirin and Ansar. Why? That was not a matter of power. This was not a matter of wealth or worldly attachment. They were the people. They were sacrificing their lives in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were looking for any wealth or any power. No. Say, no. 
They were the Muslim Muslims. So, but now, this was the case of being that who will take care of the leadership or who has to lead the Ummah. Because leadership doesn't mean that you will become a king and you will enjoy your life. No, when you will become a king, you will become a father of the entire nation. And now, their due rights, that is your responsibility and your duty to give it to them. And therefore, Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala when he was asked about someone to be appointed as Khalifa, or ruler after him, he said, no way. They asked him, your son Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu ta'ala he said, no way. Enough is enough for the people, for the family of Khattab. Khattab was the father of Umar, radiallahu ta'ala He said, he said, <coughs> that if Khalifa is something good, so the family of Khattab has taken their own share there. Because I ruled you for 12 years almost, or 11 years. Yeah? And if that is something bad, so that is also in a party family of the top from bad. I don't want to take anything more than that good which I have. I don't want to have any more bad as I did. And he said on the day of judgment, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive Umar, giving him no reward, but giving him no punishment for this leadership. So that's a success. I will say that I'm successful because I'm not held for any responsibility. My dear respected brothers in Islam. So, Sayyid Abu Bakr he was in his last moment. He was thinking for three days and night, who should be the leader of Ummah? So the Ummah must be united. 